you cannot ever overlook someone that God will use for his purpose and for his will. We often think that God can only use a certain type of person. You have heard me say that in the past couple of Sunday school lessons. And a lot of times we only think that God will use men. But as we have seen in our recent Sunday school lessons, God, he will use women. God will use those who you do not expect him to use for his purpose and for his will. For the next few weeks, we take a look at one of my favorite people that we find in scripture. We take a look at Ruth, a Gentile Moabitess woman, who again, you may not expect that God will use for his purpose and for his will, but she is integral. She is key to Jesus coming into our world. So here in our Sunday School lesson this week, taking a look at the first chapter of Ruth, opening up there in the first verse, we'll see that Ruth's story is stars out through a certain man of Judah that once dwelt in Bethlehem, but because of a famine in the land, we are told that he moved his family to the country of Moab. The Moabite people, they came through Lot, who was the nephew of Abraham. So you could say that the children of Israel and the Moabite people, you could say that they were kindred, that they were cousins. But because the Moabite people, they did not come through the blood of Jacob, because they did not come through the blood of Israel, they were considered Gentiles. Now, we'll see there in the second verse that we are given the names of uh, the family that moved from Bethlehem to the land of Moab. We're told that the certain man, his name was Elimelech, his wife was named Naomi, who serves as a very key character to the story of Ruth to, to this book. Then there are his two sons who are named Malon and Chilion. The meaning behind both of those names being sickly or puny or wasting away, both of those sons, they were not of good health, they were of, of poor health, sickly people. We're told that in the third verse that Elimelech he eventually died and Naomi, she was left with her two sons and they were left over in a foreign land. Now there was some good that had happened for them. We'll see there in the fourth verse that the two sons, they took wives, one named Orpah and the other named Ruth. Both of these women, they were Moabite women. They were Gentile women. Now what is very interesting about this is what we find over in the seventh chapter of Deuteronomy where we'll see there in the second and the third verse of the seventh chapter of Deuteronomy, that according to the Mosaic law, the children of Israel, they were forbidden, they were not supposed to marry the Gentiles in the land of Canaan. So this marriage between those two sons and then Orpah and Ruth, it was a marriage that was unlawful in consideration of the Mosaic law. So we'll see in the fifth verse that after dwelling in the land for 10 years, we are told that the poor health of both of Naomi's sons eventually caught up to them and they both died. So Naomi was the only one of her family to remain in the land alongside her, her two daughter-in-laws. So could you imagine what it was that, that Naomi was going through in this moment. Could you imagine how she would feel in this moment after losing her husband and then losing her two sons as well? And again, she is living in a foreign land. If you were in her place, if you were in her shoes, what would you do? What would your next step be? How would you feel in that moment? We'll see there in the sixth verse that Naomi she arose to prepare to go back home to Bethlehem. She had received word that God had visited his people and had blessed them. So on her worst day, Naomi, we see that she turns to God, right? We see that she leans on the Lord and this, it tells us something about Naomi. It shows us something about her faith. She was one of sincere faith. She believed in the Lord and she would remain by him, even though she was going through so much. A lot of times, many of us, when we are going through our trials and our tribulations, our afflictions, when we cannot bear what it is that we're going through, a lot of us, we will get to the point to where we start blaming God for our suffering. We start to blame God for what it is that we go through. But there is a lesson here that we can already learn from Naomi here is where again, we must learn how to remain faithful. We must learn how to stick by our faith, even though we are suffering, even though we are going through our trials and our tribulations and our afflictions, we must learn how to remain faithful. So we'll see here in the seventh verse, 
that she began to make her way home. But as she began to make her way home, both her, of her daughter-in-laws, they began to go back with her to the land of Judah. But Naomi, we'll see there, she didn't desire for them to come back home. She didn't desire for them to return to the land of Judah with her. You see, Naomi, she, she knew very well, she understood very well that the two women, Orpah and Ruth, that they would be viewed as foreigners in the land. And there may have been a way that they would have been treated in returning to the land of Judah in them being Moabite women. And so we'll see there that she told them to return to their home. She prayed that God would deal kindly with them, that the Lord would bless them as they had been a blessing to her. She even prayed there that they find peace that they find new husbands, to have a life with their new husbands, to be able to have a family with their new husbands as well. So this again, it gives us more insight on the kind of person that Naomi was. Again, we have seen that Naomi was a woman of faith, but here from what we see there in the eighth verse, we see that she was a kind, we see that she was a gentle, we see that she, she had a loving soul as well. So we see more and more here that, that Naomi, again, was a woman of faith. She was a woman of hope. Again, Naomi, she again serves there as a really good example for what faith should be, what our faith in God should be, the kind of persons, the kind of people that we should be as God's children. We should be people of love. We should be people of hope. And again, we should be people of faith, love, hope, and faith those things, they are always moving. They are always pushing forward. We took a look at Barak in our Sunday school lesson last week, and we saw that he was a man of fear. And his fear, it turned him to a man who did not have hope. And because he did not have hope, he began to be a man who did not have faith. He turned into a coward. But again, I reiterate, and I say to you again and again and again, Faith, it always desires to push forward. Faith, it never wants to sit down. On her worst day, Naomi chose not to sit down. On her worst day, Naomi, she desired to push forward. So we'll skip down here to the 14th verse. And we'll see there that Oprah, she finally relented after verses show that both the daughter-in-laws, they desire to return to be with Naomi. But we'll see there again in the 14th verse that Ruth, she she didn't relent. She, we're told there, she clung to Naomi. So why did Ruth do that? Why, why did she choose to cling to Naomi? Why did she choose to, and why was she adamant about it? Why was she adamant about remaining with Naomi? Well, Ruth, she tells us there in the 16th verse, she gives us her reasoning. We'll see there in the 16th verse that she said to Naomi, entreat me not to leave you, or to turn back from following after you, following after you. Underline that, highlight that in your Bible. Again, she said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And whatever, wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people, she said to Naomi, shall be my people and your God, my God. Ruth, and she was adamant about this. She simply did not want to leave Naomi. She loved Naomi. She loved her mother-in-law. She loved her dearly. I believe that Ruth, I believe that she saw the kind of woman that Naomi was. She saw that Naomi again was a woman of faith in, in her God. Again, we have to remember here that Ruth was a Gentile woman. And so it's very likely that at one point in time in her life that she worshiped idols. But again, she saw what Naomi's faith was doing for her in her on her worst day, where her faith, it was giving her courage. It was giving her motivation to, to again, keep on pushing forward. And so I can believe that Ruth, she saw the kind of woman that Naomi was, that she was again, a woman of faith, that she was a loving woman, that she was a caring woman even in her suffering. And so I believe that, that Ruth, I believe that she did not want to let that go. I believe that Naomi was inspiration for Ruth and that she was learning from Naomi. And so I believe that Ruth, she felt that in her life, 
there was a lot more that she could learn from Naomi. And so she wanted to cling to her to again, continue to learn from her. And so notice there that she said in the 16th verse, notice that she said to Naomi there that Naomi's people would be her people. But even more importantly there, she said that Naomi's God, our God, she said would be her God. And so again, that statement there from, from Ruth to Naomi about your God is going to now be my God. Again, it says a lot about, about Naomi. It says a lot about her faith, her faith. It was an inspiration. And so it raises the question today, what does your faith say about you? Does your faith, does it inspire those that are around you? Again, Ruth has a very key story, a very key part to play in you and I being saved today. And in you and I being able to say that Christ came to our world and, and dwelt among us. This is where, this is where her story begins. And again, we find that Naomi, she plays a very key part in, in Ruth's story. And so again, Ruth, even though we don't see what's key about her just yet, we'll see that in our Sunday school lesson next week. So I certainly hope that you'll come back for next week's lesson. All of us, we have a key. We have a very key role that we play in, in the story of others. We also have a key role that we play in our very own story, but also in the story of Christ as well. And so we'll again, we'll see more of that in our Sunday school lesson this week, but somebody, I imagine that somebody in your life that they served a Naomi role for you in your life. For me, it was my parents. It was my uncles, my aunts, my, my grandparents, people who were of faith, my, my pastor, Reverend Taylor, all the old pastors at, at Zion Hill. They played inspiring roles in my life to where I viewed them as heroes in my life to where they inspire me to, to be someone who walks in, in faith. And I'm very thankful for their inspiration. I'm very thankful for, for growing up in the manner in which I did grow up, that I grew up in the church and that I grew up to, to know the Lord. Here we see Ruth. She is now growing up in her faith and she's growing up to know the Lord. And so all of us today as believers, I hope that we would serve in in an inspiring role. And I hope that our faith, that it would inspire others as well to come to know the Lord. And as I said in my sermon last week, it is very important. We live in a time period. We live in a generation where again, it is very important for us to know God, to have knowledge of him. Again, as I said in, in my sermon last week, knowledge is the key to whether you live or die on this spiritual battlefield. And all of us, we should desire to live. We should desire to live on this spiritual battlefield. And again, we should desire to live for everlasting life. So again, something that we can learn here in our Sunday school lesson, again, it comes from Naomi. Let us inspire others in our faith. Let us inspire others in how we move in our faith. Let us inspire others in how we live in our faith. Will you do that today? Again, I certainly hope that you will. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.